Miyoshi Morris used to work at Ford Motors. Now, she was struggling to find a daycare center for her children so that she can get to work by 6 a.m. One of her managers approaches her and tells her that she's in trouble for her tardiness. However, he goes on to tell that he could help her if she agrees to visit him at his house on a day that he arranges. Feeling lost and scared, realizing that she has her children to take care of, reluctantly, Miyoshi agrees. She says afterwards, her attendance records were not a problem. In fact, she received better work assignments as well. Now, I'm sure all of you have heard similar stories, particularly during the last two years following the Me Too movement. At the same time, like the image behind me implies, for a multitude of reasons, many of these cases go unreported. So while sexual harassment is pervasive, we have little understanding as to how costly it really is to firms and their shareholders. And that's exactly what I try to find out in my research. I look at the S&P 500 firms from 2012 to 2018, and I identify 174 public announcements of sexual harassment. Now, in an efficient market, the change in share prices or the change in market value of companies represent an estimate of the potential costs or benefits related to the arrival of new information. So I find that when these announcements are made, the share prices of these companies, after accounting for normal price movements, drop by half a percent on average. And that corresponds to an average drop in the market value of these companies by 419 million US dollars. In comparison, previous studies have found that for other forms of corporate misconduct, the average drop could range from about 250 million to 350 million. Interestingly, the average victim settlement in my sample is just about 19 million US dollars. So the difference between that 419 and 19 million can be attributed to various organizational and reputational costs that go over and beyond the legal liabilities related to these cases. Now, I'm sure all of you would agree, for ethical and moral reasons, sexual harassment needs to stop. However, I'm also showing that, apart from the devastating effect this has on the victim, sexual harassment is very damaging to the shareholders as well. Therefore, on top of everything, managers have a fiduciary duty as well to ensure that they eradicate sexual harassment from the workplace. Thank you.